Hello, my viewers. I want to welcome you to this exciting lesson in Revit and Advanced Steel. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you on how you can export your model from Revit up to Advanced Steel and also from Advanced Steel up to Revit and the interchange can be done at any time depending on what you are doing. Now, you may want to do this because you want to produce maybe, for example, fabrication drawings in Advanced Steel. You want to do some bill of materials. Advanced Steel is so powerful when it comes to, you know, to, to fabrication drawings and bill of materials. And also the connections are, you know, numerous, okay? In Revit, you can do the connections, the members and everything. But, you know, in terms of the connections, you can do, you know, very, very complex, you know, connections in Advanced Steel than in Revit. In Revit, you can do it, but in Advanced Steel, it's much, much easier, okay? For the other reasons that you, are, that you may want to, to do the interchange of the model from one software to the other is that there could be someone who is just working in Advanced Steel and you don't want them to reproduce the same model, you know, wasting a lot of time. It's just a matter of giving them that model and just continue from there. If at all they have made any changes in Advanced Steel, the model can still be given to the one in Revit and just continue from where they ended without a problem. Okay, so if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel and turn on the bell notification. I usually produce videos every week, okay? Two or three videos every week. I produce them so that you, once you turn on the bell notification, you'll be notified that I uploaded a new video. Okay, so without wasting time, let's get started in this tutorial. Okay, before I proceed, I just want to ask anyone who is interested in learning Revit architecture, Revit structure, robot structure analysis, make sure that you check the links in the description. There are some courses, some good courses from start to finish on real projects where you can learn the softwares from start to finish. So let me get started in this tutorial. The first thing I'll need to do is to go to new and just start a new project using the metric structure template. Just click on OK. Then from here, I'll just go to one of the elevations and just check my levels, level one, level two. I'll go to level one there and I just want to have a few columns. Mind you, we want to create a, a simple model within here, then export it to advanced steel and you know, vice versa, okay? So what we'll do is to simply go to structure there, then go to column. And I just want to use that member there, just the first column. And I'll just, you know, just create about six columns just like that. Okay, then escape from there. You see that the columns, you know, are in form of lines, but if we go to find level of detail, we can change it like that. So the columns are done, but let's check if the columns are from level one to level two, as you can see from there, the columns are okay. Then I'll go to level two and we need to have the beams on top. Just go to structure, then go to beam. And I'll just use that default beam there. Then just pick from the centers there can see that we are seeing the lines, but we should be able to change that once we change to fine level of detail, just like that. And now also, you know, create that beam in the middle, then I'll change to fine level of detail and you see that you have the columns there. Then I'll go under the structure, then the beam system, and that by default, I'll just pick automatic and just pick, you know, uh, some beams by default. The settings here are no change, you can check the tutorials on my channel where I use the beam system in details on how you can change those settings. So I'll just click there. I have those beams, click on modify. If I go to the 3D view, see that I have the beams there. And if I just change this one to shaded, you see that I have my beams there. Now, don't forget to go to file and click on save the project, save your project there. And I'll call this one Revit to advance. Okay, we'll be to advance and then just click on save. Okay, as you can see. Now, once you do that, go to add-ins there, then go to advanced steel extension and go to settings. Okay, uh, I want to export the grids. I also want to ignore the beam cutbacks. You can see from here, if I just zoom in there, the beam is not intersecting with this one, but I don't want that in advance. You can maintain it or you can disable it because you now these cutbacks, once you put the connections advanced still, those cutbacks will be respected. So I can even ignore it if I want. It doesn't matter. You can maintain it. The other thing, make sure that you, you put the paths where the files, you, you know, where you have the members, the connections, so that 
it can be read as we bring in those members from adverse still you know it has to connect to this library to pick the correct members okay so i'll close this one the settings are okay then what i need to do i'll go back there and now export this file and brave it i'll use advanced export then the country library uk you can pick from there then just click on ok then Revit Advance, it's in that folder. I'll just click on save. So I have it within here. Then I'll go to Advanced Steel and just go to new. Okay, then just click on that template there. I just want to start a new project. So you see that that file can be shared with anyone at Advanced Steel and they're able to continue working. Okay, on your model, whether adding, you know, modifying, you know, producing drawings. Okay, using the cell model, no one has to redo these things if you are working with these two softwares. Now, once you do that, just go to export and import and make sure that you import that file, the one we exported, smlx file, just import it, click on open, and in less than a second, you see that we have that one, I can change the visual style to conceptual if I want, and you see that we have the members. Now, assuming that the one who's working at advanced still would like to do some, make some changes here and there, okay, they can still do that. But before I proceed, let me go to file, let me go to servers, save as a drawing, and I'll call advanced to Revit. That's how I'm going to call this file, then click on save. I've saved it. So the first thing is for me to, I'll just select that member. And I just want to change maybe the size for this member. Okay, maybe these are the changes that you want to, you know, to make. So I'll go to this one and change it to maybe this member. Okay, then I'll close it. Let me also pick that one there, the cell member, or even a different one, doesn't matter. I'll select on it and close. So I've changed those two members. If I want to create some new members there, for example, these are changes. You realize that you need some more members. You need to change certain sizes. You can do that. The one working in advanced still can do that. So I'll go to objects there. If at all there are some beams that I have to add here, I can do it within here and give the one doing it in Revit to you know just you see how we are going to do it. So I've done this. Right click, then I can pick the size from here. Maybe it's this one. Okay, then just close it, you know, the change has been done. Okay, then make sure that you click on save. And before you export in Revit 2023, just make sure that you do the numbering. What I'm going to do is just go to output and click on numbering. Make sure the process single parts and process assemblies is selected. If you want to learn some, some, some more tutorials in advanced steel, please comment there. I'll teach you on how you can even produce drawings and much, much more in advanced steel and also in Revit. Just click on apply once the number is done, click on OK. You can see that they, these are numbered. You can see that if I select, it's going to tell you that these are the members and that is the number. OK, I'll simply close it. And what I need to do now after making all these changes, all I need to do is to go to export and import. And I'm just going to export this one. All right, I'll call it advanced Revit, but in SMLX file, I'll save it there within the same folder. You see that it's exporting. Just click on yes there. So we have that file of these changes. Then I'll go back to Revit. So the one in Revit can just update this model by going to advanced still there and using the synchronize button there. Then find that file where I saved it, advanced to Revit, select on it, open there. So you can see that we have the appended. Appended are the new members. So just select it. The modified are the members we modified they deleted we don't have any member detail because we didn't delete any member so i'll just select all the members which are modified it could be in terms of material or the cross section they'll appear as you know modified so i'll select everything here if you want you can choose specifically what you want to change but i'm going to pick everything here as you can see then once you do that, click on apply. Once you do the apply, then you can see that just telling you can see that the updates are being done there. Just click on OK there. OK, there are some members which are slightly off access, but doesn't matter. You just have to make sure that you accept these. I just want to accept all these. All right, so everything is done. Now you are seeing the dark, it's just the material. Don't have to worry about this. So if I just select on that column there, 
I can go to where the material is. That is the material, click there. And it's just a matter of changing the color there. Just want to change it to gray, apply, okay. So all those are changed as you can see, except for the new one, I can still select on it. And I also want to change this material to gray, just like the other one. Select there, click okay, apply, apply, okay. So you have it like that. So. The changes are all here. If I go to advanced still, I try to check this material here. You can see that that is 203.10223. I can go back to Revit and check this material. You see that it's the same, I mean the member. You see that it's the same member as you can see from here. And the one that I added is right there. So the, the, the integration is quite seamless, Revit and advanced still. Now, assuming that there's someone again who wants to make some changes here, again, that's not a problem. Okay, let me assume that I just want to change that member there. I'll just make one quick change there. I just want to change it to this one. As you can see, it has changed from here. As you can see, let me also change this one again. Just want to realize to see that I still have to change this one. Okay. Let me go back there and uh, pick that one. Okay, maybe a bigger one. Okay, for some reason, there are two members, but I can still delete. Okay, so that you can also see how two deleted members are also going to appear there. So I'll also delete that member inside. Okay, I'll select that one and delete it just like that. So the member has been deleted. We have also had changed that member. So what you need to do, make sure that you have saved, then what we need to do is to simply go to there, there, and still export. Once you export, advance, then click on OK. Then I just want to add number two to differentiate between the first export and the second one. OK, then click on Save. Then if you go to advance still here, what you need to do is to synchronize this time. Just click on synchronize because the model is there. Just want to make those changes. Then pick the one with number two, then click on open. You see that the beam which was deleted is right there. So we want to accept that change. We also did some modifications. Uh, we did some, you know, we appended some members here. Okay, did we append any members, any members here? No think we didn't so I will not you know because I didn't add any new members I'll just accept the modified member so which is this one which was a beam so I just modified the beam I also you know more, you know deleted a beam I didn't like append this is because of some cutbacks and also just make sure that you apply things which you did here so just click on apply there and as you can see I'll simply close Okay, uh, those changes there. Okay, let me compare with the Revit. Let me go to Revit there. We have this member here. Okay, this is the member that we modified. So let's go back once again to, to Advanced Steel. I will go back to Synchronize, Load once again. I'll pick this one with number two. Revit to Advanced Steel, open it. There are some members which are appended. I think that's the one which I changed. Okay, let's, let me just select all these because the deleted one has been applied. Then just click on apply there. Then just click on cancel. Okay, so you can see that we have that member. Okay, this one is considered as a new member appended because the one which was modified or is the one which was deleted. So you can see this one considered as, you know, uh, appended, meaning that it's a new member which we just added. Okay, so as you can see, the changes are there. And this can be done over and over if you so wish. This also applies to connections. You can do that and you are able to work between the software. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, once again, make sure that you subscribe and like the videos on this channel. See you in some more tutorials.